Hi everyone, I'm Caroline Hill, I'm Editor-in-Chief of Legal IT Insider and I'm here with Alistair Maiden, who's the founder of Psych. Hi, hi Alistair. Hi. And Simon Harper, who's the founder of LOD, uh, previously known as Lawyers on Demand. Hi Simon. Hi Caroline. Thank you so much for joining me. So we, um, and your board, sorry, founder and board director of LOD, I should say. Did I get your titles right? I normally don't. <laughs> I've never been sure what my title is, so I think it, it could be anything you'd like it to be. <laughs> um, so we're here to. So we've got two, lots to talk about um, in the next half an hour. So um, we're, you, you've entered into a partnership. LOD has invested in Psych. Um, so we're going to talk about that. But we're also going to talk about the the market, the LSP slash managed legal services market, and how that's evolving. Um, and I'm really looking forward to hearing both your thoughts. Um, and, and how that's perhaps addressing the, some of the in-house legal pain points. Um, so, to, but to introduce you properly, so Alistair, you were previously at ASDA, um, but in 2016 you made the leap to form your own le- your own legal engineering. I think you stopped calling it legal engineering. A part of it's now legal engineering, but your own your own firm, which is Psych, um, which focused a lot in the beginning on contract automation. Um, and but you've actually expanded significantly over the last few years, haven't you? And it's, it was 40 people last year, and you now have is it over 100 people? Yes, 107. It, it changes daily. <laughs> so, I think when we spoke a couple of weeks ago, it was, it was about 100. So, and you've also gone up, it's growing fast. Yeah. Um, and we, I'm going to come on and ask you to tell, tell us more about the type of work that you do and, and, and how that fits together. But, Simon, so LOD, um, I think a lot of people will know LOD, you will probably, I think you described yourself and you probably fairly as the earliest ALSP, is that right? That sounds not far off, certainly, certainly in the UK. And you, so you founded 2007. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was you. And, um, <laughs> and you provide, you help provide corporates with flexible resource across the globe and that's been growing hasn't it over the last few years yeah that's right it's been great it's grown grown each year since um since 2007 both in terms of i guess of of um revenues people locations so um that's been been a a really really enjoyable journey and um watching things go from from being well alsp is not even having the name i guess to yeah. being almost in the mainstream. <laughs> so actually, well, let, let's, um, before I come on to talk about the publishing, so, where, so you're, you're Austra- you've merged, you've got, you're Australia now, and you're, uh, for quite a few years you've covered Australia. You've been, gro- you've been gr- growing g- in jurisdiction quite significantly. That's right, yeah, we have. So we are, we are um, we've got offices in Australia, we've got offices in uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, Dubai, so growing in that way, probably um, in, in many ways equally significantly um, growing in terms of from from the early days. Really, we were a succumbent model, um, uh, putting putting people into teams often. And now it sounds quite quite you know sounds quite historic where people physically turned up in offices. Everyone turned up in an office uh, and went to work to work with in house teams. So that's how most of the LOD lawyers were working in the early days. Um, that then um, more and more um, we went to working with clients, putting lawyers, having LOD lawyers in teams and then providing managed services. And then, of course, over the last 12 months with so many things changing and being up- upended, I suppose that model got accelerated in a way. And we all dis- we discovered that, that, the, that the, the small steps that, um, that we all as lawyers and legal teams have been taking to being working more remotely and flexibly suddenly took a great big step. You had that, I bet, because of COVID, because of the need. To absolutely, COVID. yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so actually, I mean, I'm interested, um, and I think it's quite important before we, and, and I'll, you know, I'm curious, I'll come back to you, Alistair, just to clarify a bit more about Psych before we talk about the partnership. But with LOD, so you do, yeah, as you say, it does sound a bit historic, but and now you talk about, you, so you provide, you still provide the secondments, you, you provide absolutely. legal advice, discreet legal advice if needed, um, managed services, as you said, and legal operations and tech. And, and I'm, and I'm curious, is, how much of it is, 
is it, is it properly, has it really developed into legal office and tech? How much of the business is, has expanded into that? Or is that something that you still want to do and perhaps is going to be helped by site? How much of the existing business is doing perhaps the managed services and legal office and tech? So um, you're right. That was for, for, for LOD. That's been really, I suppose, doing what we've done over the years quite a bit, which was listening to what clients were telling us that, that were, were uh concerning them, what was occupying their time, uh, forward-looking, what it was that they were thinking about in the coming months and years, and and um, legal ops and, and, and legal tech in particular was something that was crucially important to them. We put uh, a, a, a toe in the water, or a few toes in the water, if you were like to start helping them w- with that, and it was not just for our, our clients, but for the lawyers in the team too, but it was, you know, a few toes in the water made it obvious to us that, that, we needed to work with somebody that were, was fully immersed, had been immersed for a long time. Um, in a way, you know, Alistair and I have known each other for what in what in new law terms is 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 a long time, I guess three or four years. And the site name had, every time we were talking with clients in the market, we'd hear the site name over and over. I think Alistair and I had a shared uh, view, but often discussed over a pint or a coffee about. Our, our own businesses and what they were doing and what we were what we were there for and what we were trying to help people to do and um, it seemed obvious who to who to team up with so yes a toe in the water but we needed much more um, and so just so and Asda in terms of so you, you've obviously been working you started off at Asda and you you I think this is quite well known now so you created um, you were, you were heading the contracts team where you were heading contracts so you put in place, you introduced Contract Express, end-to-end contract solutions. You've always been interested, even as a, even as a lawyer, you know, you're very much focused on that. How much of this, the work that you're doing currently with in-house teams is, is contract automation? How much has that expanded? Yeah, uh, well, I think, I, I mean, when I, when I was doing the work at Asda, which I started in 2012, um, I think it's fair to say that, you know, CLM wasn't really a thing. Like, I, I, I know that you have companies like Agiloft that have been around for 30 years, but um, I was Google searching, you know, digital contracting and contract automation, and there wasn't really much available, and there wasn't really any guidance available. Um, and it was almost like an underground movement to a certain extent. I eventually met Richard Newton, uh, who's one of the founders of Contract Express, and then Andy Wishart as well, and the, the rest is history effectively. So, um, and uh, I think there's still, you know, CLM is now, and digital contracting is now very mainstream. So pretty much every organization is doing it. Um, and so obviously there is currently a massive opportunity in that, but I think there's a, that's going to go on. It's, it's now an industry in itself. Uh, in terms of our turnover, it's probably about 60, 65% of our turnover. Um, but I think it's really important to note that contracting isn't a single thing. It's not just creating the contracts. It's also negotiating the contracts, getting them approved, getting them signed. It's reviewing new contracts, which might be on third party paper. Once the contracts are in place, there's a whole obligation management piece. There's also things, events like um, Brexit and eyeball LIBOR means you might need to go and look at the new things in your contracts, which you don't already have. So it's kind of a whole end to end ecosystem. And I think it's really important to note that we are involved in all different aspects. So while we have some clients who want to do everything. We've got a lot of clients where we're only doing one of those kind of seven different parts of the life cycle. Okay. <laughs> and, then, um, and then we also do, the, there's some other areas that are quite big for us. See, so, uh, you remember um, one of the other things that we did at Asda was introduce what I'm, as far as I'm aware, was the first kind of digital legal front door. Um, and that's something that I've been banging on to people about for years, but they only seem to have recently started to pay attention. And now that's a big part of what we do, say helping corporate legal departments to 
triage their work and send it to an LOD or send it to the right person internally. And I think that, I, I actually think the advent of clock has really helped with that because um, it's encouraged people to organize their corporate legal departments and the two things are really aligned. And then there's all the other stuff, which probably is the remaining 10%, which is things like spend management, so things like legal tracker and pursuit busy lamp, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're doing quite a lot of experimental work with law bots, um, using Azure, Watson, et cetera, et cetera. Very, very, very interesting. Uh, so kind of, um, I, I would I describe that as non-static FAQ. So the user is interfacing with digital content libraries, which is very interesting. And uh, and it just, you know, as new things arise, I think we're, uh, I guess we see it as really important to our business and to our market position that we're always at the cutting edge. So we're really interested to get into anything new, effectively. Mm -hmm. I think we just find it fun, basically. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> and that's great. And you know, we should have a conversation at a separate time about a lot of us. Um, but so... Um, yeah, I find it fascinating as well. And, and I guess um, working together, so, so obviously, albeit that you are scaling, there's been, there's only so far that you can scale and, and, and only so far your reach can go. So with the partnership, so working together, so Simon, your your team is constantly working with in-house teams which are expressing their need for tech solutions. Um, and so that will be communicated to Alistair in terms of identifying those opportunities. But also, I think it's relevant at this point to talk about, so you've invested in Psych, haven't you? Um, and that is with an ambition to grow the team further, to, to, to sort of facilitate or to enable them to scale further and more quickly, perhaps. And, and that's right, yes. I, I guess it's the, the partnership was not about, it was about if you like, creating the partnership and investing to 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 further that sort of joint endeavor, if you like, to help in-house teams do things, um, uh, do things differently, whether that's through people or through, through tech, but not about um, uh, kind of crashing the two businesses together where they, where they don't need to be. And we know that, that clients are quite happily working with LOD and with Psych, um, and, and sometimes the people and tech solutions are um, working in parallel, doing separate things. And that works really nicely. It works really nicely already. So we're not here to change anything that's, that's happening with it, either within our own organizations or within, within legal teams. But there are times too when, um, and, I, and I, I can really, I guess, speak from the, speak from the LOD side here. We, we know, we see that, um, that yeah, sometimes our, our individual lawyers that are working out there need, need um tech augmentation if you like but much more often once we're starting to provide teams and manage services having the very best bit of technology implementation um, alongside that is increasingly fundamental so that's where it becomes um i guess, I guess more important and integrated from, from a that's the you know that's looking from the people end of the lens yeah. um where techno technology helps i know from as i said discussions over the years um Alistair and the team of having having a different lens, but quite similar conversations. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. So, Alistair. No, it's just I, I, just a really important point. Um, so, when I was at Asda, the system that um, I helped to create there uh, did actually interface with people as well. So, uh, essentially, if you were doing something routine and straightforward. Um, you could self-serve that as a, as a business user. But if it required um, the intervention of someone with legal experience and expertise, it would actually be fired out to the right internal or external legal support. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a, with a bit of regret that we haven't, we've replicated the technical parts of that, but not the people parts of that so far. So um, and I think it's it might be the case that, that to, to be honest, I'm not totally convinced that the market was ready for it, rather like I described the legal front door earlier. I yeah. think that's changing now. Um, I think it's really it's been really interesting to observe 
uh, from a distance, and now obviously we're closer, uh, how the LAD managed legal services business has developed. Um, and you can really see how piecing the two bits together could get very exciting. Um, I'm very excited by it. No, no, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. So the triage thing, I, I, did, I have written, um, so BT, you're probably familiar, they, so they, they've been, they did a triage thing as well, you know, they, and I think, but there's always the people element, isn't there? You know, you've got this, there's obviously going to be certain element of the routine, if you do it however you decide what gets triaged where, but there's always going to be, you know, a, a need for, for people. And I think this, this I agree with you, this partnership um, is exciting in terms of that. Um, but so it was it was it would you say that was it driven by client demand? Did were people asking you, Simon, saying you know we bring, bring in more tech reserve, was it, or was it something that you just thought actually we we, we spot a gap? So I think there's all, there's always a combination. There's always a combination of of um, uh, client demand and a relationship that that that, that works. So yeah. we've looked, I think if I look back over the decade plus of LOD and uh, the things that have, have worked well, the services that have worked well over the years, and maybe the things that have, have uh, not so much um, flown. And is the one the ones where there's been a, a, an element of client collabor collaboration and the nudging along by clients, of perhaps surprise, surprise, being the ones that have, have very often worked the best. So definitely a piece of that. But it's also, I think, about the the relationship and spotting in a way an organization that works sufficiently like your own to be able to present that that sort of joint offer i mean it's been really nice for me this week of course when we first we, we announced the partnership two or three weeks ago and you, you talked to we talked to our own internal team about it um i've been thinking about this for quite a long time so so it was a it was a a a, a, a a genuine enthusiasm with some depth of knowledge about it. But of course you present it to the team and it's a little more new. And so this week I'm starting to get the, as the conversations are, are happening and Alistair and his team are exploring how they work with clients. I'm starting to get the emails coming through saying, oh, we just had it. We just had the chat. We've got, we got one yesterday. Um, I just had a chat with the site team about what, my, what we might be doing with, with X client. This is great. It's, you know, this is, this is just what we need. And, and, um, uh, and, and, and Maybe it's, maybe it's odd to be surprised by that. I sort of want to go, well, yeah, that's sort of why we, that's the whole point. That's why we're doing it. But nice to get those, uh, those reactions of enthusiasm. So, so we, uh, so it's not, it's, it's, we, as we discussed, it's not exclusive and, you, and you're quite adamant about that. But I know that there's a, an intention to sort of leverage it both ways. So, and, and one thing I think it has a lot of potential is this idea that you can start to create joint workflows. I think that, so for me, one of the things that makes absolute sense is where you've got re re repeated processes to not reinvent the wheel each time. And I'm sure that that's something that you're looking at doing together. I know you're thinking, so Alistair, presumably you can leverage your skills in terms of the managed services offering and, and, and really sort of making sure that there's no reinventing the wheel for, for, for where, where, I mean, in-house teams, obviously a lot of what they do is, is different depending on the nature of the business, but then a lot of it is the same, right? So I imagine that, is that something that you're already looking at or is it still quite early days? I think, um, so much of what we do is client-led, similar to the what to, as Simon just described, but it is really interesting about, you know, I spend a lot of time having conversations with GCs and legal ops directors, and there's an incredible amount of crossover in what they're looking for. Um, and one of the things that I'm going to be encouraging them to do over the next year or so is to think about, you know, does their workflow and process need to be different? Mm -hmm. Or would they be happy to... Um, now, obviously, the, the confidential data needs to be se segmented, but they, could they effectively use an application which is the same thing? Uh, and then I think it gets really interesting, doesn't it, when you piece that together with the legal expertise and experience within the LOD organisation, because you know you then have the opportunity to leverage scale. Um, so you know I have a competition law question, so it goes to the same person, but several organisations might be doing the same thing, and I think that that does get really exciting, you know, particularly for, we have a lot of customers who um, 
are frustrated because the, the organization might be big, but maybe the legal team's under invested. Mm. Um, and I think that's where LED has um, you know, um, been really helpful to those organizations actually. And, and, and us too, because we create simple workflows and systems to help them. Um, but I think almost having that, um, that, extent, that extension of your team where you don't have to go to all the trouble of kind of individually setting it up. You know, you don't have to do a panel review and then, you know, work things out and it gets complicated as people leave or the business creates, you know, for certain work streams, NDA, statements of work, master services agreements, um, maybe things, you know, other routine things like advertising claims and queries, um, the IP clearances, all of those things. They could just happen. You don't have to worry about them. It just happens. You know, there's a process. When a new customer joins the sales team, oh, how do we do legal? Oh, go onto this site. It explains everything. And then just go ahead and knock yourself out. You don't have to go through all of that teething process. I think it's really, really, I keep on saying it, but it's really exciting. So I, so I think that brings me on to, so I think um, I want to make sure that we, talk about the, the the market at large i think that's quite a nice segue into yeah um so i think what's really fascinating to me is how in, in-house teams what you know how this all, all fitting together right this is all evolving obviously one you know yeah, when i started writing about the legal sector in 2004 it was a very different place um and there's so much so many, in-house teams can now turn to so many different routes to get to get their needs their legal needs met so do you think, how many legal teams do you think are now looking, instead of growing their own capability and having staff on the books, how many are you speaking to now that are seriously going, well, do you know what, we think that we could turn to either managed services offering, whatever that looks like, an ALSP slash technology, instead of growing their own team? Does that make sense? Am I, am I articulating that? Simon, I don't know if you want to start with that. So I guess the thing that uh, during the history of LOD, the thing that we've seen pretty much, I mean, yeah, I guess every trend goes, uh, has its, has its uh, ups and downs along the way. But the thing that we've seen fairly consistently um, has been actually the, the, the still, and there, there's, 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 there's lots of them I know are coming under pressure, but has over that time period been a growth, the ongoing growth of the in-house team and the growth of the amount of work that they're expecting expecting and expected to do and the level of that work alongside um, in comparison with the law firms that they're working with. So now whether that, I guess that, that naturally um, through, through cost constraint or, or, or corporate strategy starts to get curtailed, which is, which is where you know, we have conversations about how to... Um, how to it's become a cliche isn't it how to get done more done with more done with less but we end up having those those conversations um once those once those um teams start to get curtailed i'm sure as does alistair and psych but actually overall the growth of those teams and um and the work and i suppose actually even more so the amount of work that they're expected to do has been the ongoing trend and it's that amount of work that they're expected to do themselves without passing it back to perhaps their traditional law firms that's uh that's changed, and that's the, 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 I guess, the space that both we and and Psych in our in our a similar space, but occupied in in a in a with a from a slightly different perspective. That's really yeah. interesting, Alistair. Did you thought? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I say, I think it was definitely the case at Asda, and it's definitely the case for every single GC that I speak to that um, they could be doing more work. Mm. Um, and, and what I mean by that is, uh, and I, I remember when I first started Psych, I used to present a, a, a picture of this uh, to visually demonstrate it. But um, most legal teams react to demand. Yeah. They don't go out there and create demand. So they'll know that there are things that they really ought to have a control of. Um, so it might be agreement types, it might be risk areas, but they don't have the resource 
to deal with them. So they kind of just leave them and hope that they won't cause a problem in the future. Um, now, I think part of the reason that they leave them is because trying to address um, those problems using the kind of analog legal model is, is unpalatable. The cost system doesn't really work. Um, I do think through technology or managed legal services or a combination of those things particularly, uh, there is an opportunity to actually face into those problem areas and, and deal with them. They're, they're typically characterized by volume, I think, is the volume is the issue. Yeah. Um, but also, and I think it's really important not to forget this, there's a whole part of our team which goes in and tries to understand the issue as a as a process almost deconstruct it and then reconstruct it as a as a system and i think um i think the other notable thing is of course those skills are not common in you know you don't get taught well yeah. I say you don't get taught that stuff at law school. I'm teaching a class on that next week. But, you know, t traditionally, you don't get taught that. <laughs> uh, you know, my generation of lawyers, um, I mean, I had to learn those skills relatively late in my career, is what I'm saying. So. Yeah, I do, I do think it's interesting. I mean, I have spoken to, on the supplier side, admittedly, people, so, so, just to, you know, H HBR or you know other other organisations that are that that are now um, insourcing outsourcing uh, so that they're taking over the in-house team and I think but but I think there's lots of different ways of, of of skinning the cat as it were and I think one of the things that you bring is so you so in, in terms of the tech so you're t you would you describe yourself as tech agnostic in terms of the tech that you can bring to bear within the in-house team? Yeah. Yeah. So and so and, and I think but simply, I mean, we do have favourites because some technologies are much better than others. But <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you would, if, if you just read the marketing, you wouldn't believe that. Actually, you'd think that they are all created equal, but um, there is a big difference in capability. But then I suppose, and I suppose that raises the interesting point as well, which is that you have the. Whereas, if you're an in-house team trying to do you know, tr trying to do, like, they just don't have the knowledge or the, the, the breadth or what, whereas you can, you can, applying, applying what you're offering across a whole number of different firms, you can start to benefit from that, can't you? Which is something that uh, absolutely, you're just, you're absolutely. just working within an in-house team, even if you have, with respect to some of the legal ops heads who are very good, it's, you just simply don't have the bargaining power for a start and you don't, you know, and, 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 and again, you're reinventing the wheel. I think there's two distinct advantages. So I was describing before we started the recording how with Insight we operate on teams yeah. and literally how that works is I'll go and speak to a GC or, or one of my colleagues. We'll take down some notes and we go through a bit of it, even though it might be quite informal, we'll be going through, one of the things we'll be trying to do is to understand their needs effectively and their existing technologies. We'll take a note down, and then as soon as the call's over, we'll ping it out to a group of experts to say, okay, this is the background. How do you think we would best solve that? And those experts will be a combination of people working across different technologies, but also individual practice directors for technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's quite interesting because they're kind of in competition with one another within our organization. Um, but the choice of technology um, is, from a technical perspective, quite complicated. And yeah. so I think people do need help. So, for example, even if you, to give a tangible example, um, if you said to me, uh, I want to buy a digital contracting tool, mm. I'd say, well, is the focus buy side or sell side? Um, and then if it's... Uh, sell side, are you using Salesforce or Dynamics? And it, and it goes down that train and your choice, those, those two questions alone would be a massive influence on my recommendation. 
I'm going to start uh, with that's a really important point. Yeah. I'm going to start because I've got one minute left, and I'm going to go to Simon. On so so, in terms of law firms, um, this is <laughs> a very unfair. Order. Co- competitor or partner? I mean, I I, I say say com- very, very much competitor in your case. I speak to a lot of um, managed legal services providers or ALSPs who say, no, no, we love each other. <laughs> but presumably, in this case, that's not the case. They're, they're very much comp- competition. Is that right? Um, I'm afraid we've only got about a minute. Sorry. <laughs> so, I guess right from the start. So LOD was born out of a law firm. And I think uh, with with some, and I appreciate the irony, irony of this, I actually, actually really enjoyed my time within the law firm world. Um, and so, so actually, I guess a lot of, a lot of respect there definitely partnering with firms. We did that from the early days and we do that now, but the difference now is that there's an overlap too. And of course there's some competition. Um, it's not as big as you might think because lots of what we do are the things that the firms don't necessarily want to be spending their time doing, but there is some overlap. No, I am um, unfortunately we've run out of time, but um, and uh, it's been great chatting to you and I wish you the best of luck and I look forward to catching up for the, so the next stage, find out how things are going. Great, thank you.